Hey, what is up guys? My name is Grief Drums, and as promised, here is my advanced map tips and tricks guide for the map Canal on Rainbow Six Siege. As with the previous guys, if you already know these tips and tricks, awesome. If you don't, hopefully they will help improve your game. So let's get straight to it with some drone placements. Downstairs in the boat supplies or boathouse, you can jump up on top of this locker and on top of these life preserver rings. From there, you can take it a step further by jumping up on top of these trusty white pipes, as with other maps. By moving all the way to the end, you get a good view of the room, and you can move around quite a lot up here to get different angles of the room. Once you're up here, though, you do want to stop moving because you can easily be spotted. In the little cupboard area just next to the boat supplies, you can jump up on top of a lot of these pipes to get a good vantage point for anyone hiding in there. The one thing I will say is if you jump up on top of this ventilation duct, your view does become very limited, but you are rather hidden. So it's a bit of a trade-off. If you're going to be using your drone in the game, then maybe come up here and you can always peek it over the edge just to have a quick look. If you want to leave it for other team members to have a look when they're all dead, you don't really want to leave it up there and you're better off putting it on the shelf. On the other side downstairs, you can jump up on top of the boat and then up on top of these tool cabinets that are on the wall. There's also some white pipes here, so they can be quite handy. You can go one better than this, though. By coming down onto the floor and then jumping up on top of this red table just over here, you can then go up on top of the light and then onto the roller blind, similar to Hereford, and then you can go a step further than that by jumping up on top of the white pipes or the yellow beams up above. These can give a dirty view of the room. On the floor above, a lot of people like to come over into the corners and hide on top of these filing cabinets. This in itself is not a bad spot and it gives a good view of the room, but loads and loads of defenders know about this and they use it themselves when they're on the attack. So as a result, it's almost guaranteed that your drone's going to get shot out. If you look up towards the roof, you'll notice that some roof tiles are missing. You can actually jump your drone up into here. If you move over to the right hand side, you can't see a whole lot as all the tiles are in place. But over on the left hand side, you can position your drone to look down into the room through open tiles. Up here, your drone is really hidden and the view of the room is insane. If your team can get a couple of drones up here looking at different views, you are guaranteed to have more information than you know what to do with. As you can see here, the tiles aren't really somewhere that people are going to look, and it can be really difficult to spot your drone, especially if you're not moving around too much. Moving on to the second building on this map, over in the map room, you can actually jump your drone up on top of this whiteboard over here. However, this box is needed. By jumping up on top of this box first, you then have enough height to get up on top of the projector screen. This can be tricky to get to because you need to land on that box first. If you don't, you just don't have enough height to get up there. Slightly further around in the same room, you can jump up on top of the filing cabinets just like in the lifeguard office. As a defender looking for drones, just look out for flying bits of paper as it's really obvious when they hit a map. As an attacker, aim for the white pipes yet again. By using an array of crazy jumps to the left and the right, you can actually climb up all of the map racking. You can just keep going higher and higher until you get to where you want to be. Or alternatively, you can use the top of this to jump across to the ones in the middle. These will give a little bit better view of the room, although you are a little bit more exposed. The biggest problem with this room is the amount of corners that there are, and as a result, you need quite a few drones in here to get a good look. On the floor directly above, a lot of people like to try and lock down this hallway. By jumping up on top of the metal, then the TV, our white pipes are here yet again. They're all over this map, and it can be so beneficial. You can get a good look down the stairs, you can keep an eye on the hallway. This place is just awesome. Sticking with the upstairs and moving along towards the server room, this is one of the positions the defenders have to lock down for secure area. By jumping up on top of these fuse boxes attached to the side of the servers, you can then jump up on top of the servers themselves. From here, you can jump across to different servers to move your drone around and get different views of the room. Although there is a grating directly above you, unlike Hereford, you can't get up into it. Over in the corner of the serve room, there are more fuse boxes and pipes, but by jumping up on the inside of here, you are fairly hidden because of the grating that's on the opposite side of you. I wouldn't recommend jumping as high as I am here, as you do stand out a fair bit. Maybe stay a little bit lower down. In the adjoining room, in between the two, there are very often people hiding, so jumping up on top of here and then up onto the top, you can get in amongst the pipes and you can hide a drone in here just to keep an eye out if someone's in there. Once several windows are blown in each room, people will usually retreat to here and hide, so having a drone in there isn't going to hurt. In the control room, there are several places to go to, but I'll show you a couple just to give you an idea of what you can do. You can jump up over onto the TV in the corner, which gives a good view of the front of the room. Or by jumping over up onto this table and then onto the speaker, you can jump up onto these white pipes. Again, I know they're everywhere. But if you don't tag and keep movement limited, you can get a good view of the room of anyone doing the bandit trick or anyone hiding behind the control desk. A slightly different view of the control desk can be got from 
getting onto it and then over to this fire extinguisher in the corner there are white pipes running along behind the top of it now the view is really limited due to the tvs being in the way but moving all the way to the opposite side you can get a good look towards the doorway as well as keeping an eye out for anyone behind the control there you can get up into the roof but the view is limited so i wouldn't even bother moving on from drone placements and back over to the other building of the map this long corridor here is where a lot of people come from, certainly if they're attacking boat supplies. As you can see in the roof, I've made a dirty little murder hole, and this is found by just making a hole over in here in the lifeguard office. This gives such a good view of the room, and anyone trying to come down that little corridor is going to get a nasty headache when you shoot down onto them. When defending the boat supplies, it doesn't hurt to have a roamer up here just to keep an eye on the hatch or keep an eye out for anyone coming into the building. By making a murder hole down on this side, you can also keep an eye on the door on the other end. This then allows one person to lock down the long corridor, this doorway, and anyone going for the hatch. What you may not know is that this floor is actually breachable. By shooting down into here, you can look into the corridor down below, or by blowing up the floor just to the left, you can look down into the shower room. Now as an attacker, when you're trying to come in, there is very often someone hiding just in the toilet area here. So blowing this floor up and shooting down on them is going to ruin their day and allow your teammates to come in through the door that we were just taking a look at. This next tip is a little bit more well known and can leave you vulnerable if there are any roamers in the other building looking across. However, what you can do is you can actually rappel down here and look over the top into the boat supplies. This can be handy if anyone's trying to keep an eye on it. Out the front of the lifeguard office you'll notice that the floor is all wooden. As a result, this is breachable, so you can blow it up and look down into the corridor below to keep an eye on any doorways. This can be extremely effective if anyone is moving around down there in the corridor or trying to keep an eye on the stairs. As you come in through the front door, you may or may not know this, but this wall over on the left is breachable. On the other side, it's fairly obvious that it is, but you're always defending when you're on that side. When you're coming in through the front door, if you put a hole here, they're not going to expect to see it. This can give a good view all the way down to the opposite end of the corridor. If you're attacking the map room, the floor below it is all breachable. I don't see people using this enough. People need to be more creative as this has got so many kills for me. When playing as Ash, if you shoot this area here, you are guaranteed there is going to be someone in there. There's nearly always someone in that walk-in cupboard. By opening it up with a breaching round, you are going to be laughing. You're going to get a really good view into the room to be able to kill anyone in there. Even if there's no one in there, the fact that the floor is blown means that they're not going to want to go back in there. The other two good places to blow up are this far left corner above the grating, or alternatively the back right corner. These are both places that people love to hide and we're really going to ruin their day if you open the floor up below them. Another good view into the cupboard is from the serve room above by blowing up this corner over here. You can do it with a breach and charge, breach and round, or even just shoot down through it. It offers you a dirty view onto the top of them. This next one is no good if you have a shotgun, but if you have a slightly more long range weapon, by moving to the back of the server room and looking down in between these, you can get a good view onto the window just outside. The good thing about this is it provides you a lot of cover and the enemy can't really see you unless they line you up perfectly. If you're defending the top floor, you'll notice that a lot of pro league players like to sit just here. This is because you're out of view of all of the windows and you can lock down this entire upper corridor, especially if you have a shield just behind you, but you can also peek on any of the windows. You can't be seen from any of them here if you don't peek, but you can lock down both those windows and the stairs and this entrance just here. The only downside to this is if there are people at all of those windows, you can't get away without exposing yourself for a brief amount of time. This one's no good if you're defending the control room because a lot of people will have already reinforced all of these walls. However, if you're defending the map room and you know that people are likely to come from above, you can open up all of this and have a good view from the stairs. From there, you can see anyone's feet that appears without exposing yourself from behind. The thing I love about this is they can't really see you, but you get a good view that someone's there and a lot of intel. Locking yourself down into one room rarely works on this map, so pushing out to defend the bridge is usually going to help. By putting a reinforcement up here, you can often trick less experienced players into thinking they're attacking the objective room. By putting a big hole in the wall behind you, you offer yourself an escape hatch. This can be a godsend if you get caught out. This means that you can peek people on the bridge, give them a couple of rounds, and then escape. With the addition of Valkyrie into the game, placing cameras is also something else to consider. In the server room, if you rip down this window at the beginning of the round, you can chuck a Valkyrie camera right the way over onto this wall here. From there, it doesn't stand out too much, and if you're not tagging, it can be a godsend. It gives you a really good view of anyone that's about to attack the wall upstairs and repelling up the windows on the side. Another point to note for defenders is downstairs in the garage area. You can actually come into here without being classed as being outside. Now, whilst I have seen people doing this in the past, it usually ends up in them dying fairly early on. 
because they're running around and shooting people at distance. Instead, if you hide over here, anyone coming in through that door is going to get a nasty surprise when you just suddenly appear from behind them. The final tip I'm going to give on this map is this bit in between the two rooms upstairs, the floor is breachable. It doesn't look it, but it is. And wow, can this be helpful. By blowing it up at the beginning of the round, if you're defending the map room, you can get a brilliant view on the door directly in front of the hostage. This, of course, isn't the only way to use this knowledge. Instead, if you're attacking, you can open up the floor at the back, and this just cuts off the majority of the room. As you can see from this, if you were on the defending team and all of this was opened up above you, you would be a little bit worried. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to beat the hell out of that like button. If you don't already, make sure to subscribe. And you can vote for the map that you want to see next by clicking on the card above. If you've got any more hints and tips for this map, let me know down in the comments below as I always love learning more. Until next time guys, stay reckless and relentless.